Good morning. Hope all of you are having a nice day. Today we are going to listen to talk some of the insights on conflict uh, minerals and how to handle the latest requirements. I'm moving over to the next slide. Okay. During the session, I expect everyone to uh, mute yourself. And uh, we are recording this meeting and this will be shared with you after the session. Once the session is over, there will be a survey at the end of the webinar. And uh, uh, please uh, fill that out. And in case you have any questions or the comments, uh, please feel free to uh, use the comment section or else ask uh, the questions uh, at the end of the session in case time permits. Moving over to the next slide. Today we have two speakers. One is uh, myself, Ranjini Vandrajan. I belong to the Compliance uh, Division, and we have our uh, Conflict Minerals Expert, uh, Rajiv Selvam, with us today. And uh, this would be our agenda for the day. So we are going to have an overview of uh, Conflict Mineral Regulations. Uh, we are going to see uh, the CMRT template sections and processes. Uh, the third will be uh, what is the latest uh, conflict minerals uh, requirements. And then we will move on to Autogen CM, which is a software suit for uh, taking care of your conflict minerals regulation. We'll have a followed by a live demo. Uh, and then we'll have a short recap of uh, the session today. Moving over to the next slide. And uh, before uh, starting on conflict minerals, I would uh, just introduce uh, our company. Um, um, we are API Engineering, and we have uh, four divisions, uh, four business units operating uh, within us. One is the Engineering Sourcing, Compliance, and Cataloging, and uh, we are a part of the Compliance Division today. We have our offices in the U.S., India, and the uh, and Germany. Uh, we are 2015 and uh, uh, 27001 uh, certified. We are also TSAC certified. Moving over to the next slide. And uh, we provide global software solutions and services uh, to help companies comply with the product chemical regulations. As you can see, uh, there are uh, a lot of uh, uh, wide reach of uh, compliances that are available with this. There's a lot of coverage. Um, some of uh, the prominent uh, compliances like REACH, ROHS, uh, SKIP, IMDS, Conflict Minerals, uh, PFAS, and also uh, recently we have also um, added up uh, uh, sustainability related regulations as well, and we do also due dil supply chain due diligence uh, related regulations as well. Uh, due to the lack of time, I am just uh, skipping this over. And I'm going to start a quick poll. Uh, kindly take some time to answer them. I hope all of you are able to see the polling screen. So I'm closing the poll for now. And we are going to start with the, the overview of conflict mineral regulations. And uh, there are a lot of reasons why uh, conflict mineral regulations came into place. 
uh, first of all, uh, uh, minerals were uh, mined in conditions of uh, armed conflict and human rights abuses. And all these um, armed groups, they earned a lot of money. They made a lot of profit uh, by uh, trading conflict minerals uh, uh, to other countries through their neighboring regions. And, um, and armed groups also forced uh, uh, most of the local uh, residents into participating into mining activities, uh, which was a source of income for them. And um, most of the minerals that were um, um, mined were smuggled out of Congo through uh, the neighboring countries. And uh, uh, people who used uh, all this uh, profitable income, they also uh, not only used it for their own personal gain, but also uh, used it to further uh, violent uh, causes. Moving over to the next slide. And uh, that is one of the main reasons because there was a lot of abuse, not only in terms of uh, money extraction and uh, illegal trading uh, uh, or uh, smuggling to other countries, uh, but also there were a lot of uh, forced labor and a uh, lot, uh, lot more cases of uh, human rights violation. Uh, that is why we had the conflict minerals uh, regulations, which was first uh, drafted by uh, the USA. So this came into place through the Dodd uh, Frank Act uh, by Jan. Uh, uh, 2010 through President Obama, and uh, he has um, uh, made all the US stock exchange market. All the public related uh, companies in US must be reporting on the 3TG. Uh, we know 3TG is uh, tin, tantalum, tungsten, and gold. Uh, so, uh, US public uh, listed companies are uh, required to report on them. And uh, though this uh, act came uh, into existence by uh, 2010, there was a final ruling by SEC, Securities and Exchange Commission, uh, that um, all these publicly listed companies in US, they have to uh, do a special disclosure annually uh, every year uh, before 31st of May. Moving over to the next slide. And uh, while the uh, U.S. Uh, was a starter of the conflict minerals, uh, then we also have uh, the same regulation uh, also within the European Union. And um, uh, there's a lot of difference uh, between the regulation that has been uh, um, carried out in these uh, two um, uh, global economies in the EU. The regulation will directly apply to all the importers of the metals on, or minerals. So this uh, basically came into effect from uh, 1st Jan. Uh, 2021 and um, uh, in the European Union they also had a commission um, and, and uh, in the commission they ha actually had a group of external uh, experts who will provide a list of uh, conflict affected in high risk areas uh, so the list is basically they uh, in EU they divided into two so one is an indicative list where um, the European Union will come up with uh, uh, areas that is uh, affected by the conflict or else if there are any other illegal activities uh, that is involved. And the other is a non-exhaustive list where it is um, it will not include all the affected areas, but however, when there are companies which are operating in those regions, they would have to comply with the um, uh, conflict mineral regulation. So moving over to the next slide. And uh, here we have listed down the differences between the US and the Europe conflict mineral regulation requirements. Uh, so the scope uh, being different in U US, it's all the public uh, use of public companies, uh, where in uh, Europe we, uh, we have clearly seen it is all almost all the importers of uh, the DDGs. And uh, though the uh, scope can be different, the due diligence uh, requirements remains the same. Uh, both of them follow the o OECD uh, methodology. And the disclosure in US is going to be an uh, annual filing, by, uh, whereas in e EU it's going to be a continuous monitoring effort. And then the people who are in charge of uh, risk and control will be the SE audit and NGO, re and NGO reviews in the US. And then EU it's taken care of by national regulator enforcement. And uh, though these, uh, uh, you know, though there are uh, differences uh, in the conflict mineral regulations uh, in these two global economies, we can also see uh, that the template used for conflict mineral reporting templates is the same uh, for practical purposes. And um, yeah, and you is also uh, EU. They also have certain conditions. If you are an artist 
uh, article manufactured in European Union. So there is no legal uh, requirement for you to comply with this uh, uh, regulation. And uh, we can also see that uh, uh, in US, uh, there is no segregation of the upstream and uh, downstream related processes. But whereas in uh, EU, all the people who come under uh, upstream most of them would have to comply with the um, uh, treaty, um, the conflict metal regulations as such. Moving over to the next slide. Okay, so uh, we are in the second section where we are going to see about uh, what is available with the conflict mineral reporting template and uh, its process. So uh, basically, conflict mineral reporting template uh, uh, came through RMI. And uh, this is a standard that is uh, used both by uh, the U US and the EU. And we have five uh, major sections out here. So first uh, is the company information. The reporting template consists of five major sections. The first is your company information that you have. Uh, you give the details of your organization, uh, what is the scope of uh, your reporting uh, and those sort of questions. And the second is uh, uh, declaration scope questions. Mostly these are uh, related to the usage of uh, conflict minerals um, in your organization. You have to say like whether you have used or not used. So uh, mostly they are declarative types. And uh, the other is the company level, question, uh, company level questions. And uh, so they are mostly based uh, on the policies that your organization has with respect to uh, conflict minerals. Uh, the fourth section is uh, the list of uh, smelters uh, uh, that must be uh, entered. So we will talk in uh, detail uh, over the next few slides. And then you also have the product list. Uh, so product list um, is mostly, mostly required for uh, people who have the declaration scope as uh, product level. Uh, so if you are going to declare it on a company level, you would not uh, be required to fill up this product list. So I'm moving over to the next slide. And this is the uh, standard uh, process. Um, we are, uh, though OECD uh, due diligence is huge, it's very, very elaborative. What we have uh, tried doing is like, you know, put out a uh, outline of uh, what happens throughout the process. So we can see that there are four major steps. So first it starts with the supply chain uh, tracing. So as an organization, we'd have to list uh, uh, the applicable suppliers. And the second one is uh, supplier en engagement, which is very daunting for most organizations. Uh, first, uh, even before engaging, uh, uh, when we start to engage with them, we have to uh, have them be aware of the conflict minerals regulations. And uh, once uh, we are on par, uh, we have to request uh, the CMRT submission. So that comes under supplier engagement. And the third is uh, data assurance and assessment. Uh, so all the data that uh, practically comes to the organization through suppliers uh, must go through a due diligence process. That is the data has to be verified and validated. And for validating uh, the data that has been provide for, provided by the organizations, we we at APA have come up with more than 150 criteria to uh, check the data. So, um, uh, and uh, the final thing, uh, the final aspect is uh, in the process is reporting. So once um, we have uh, uh, identified our suppliers and we have engaged with them, uh, then we have uh, validated the data that has come from them. Then we have to consolidate all the data that has been uh, given by the suppliers. So uh, the consolidation will take place. So the consolidation will differ based uh, on where you are. If you are in US, it's going to be a bit different. And how it's done in the EU is going to be a bit different. So these, uh, this is a four-step uh, uh, process that we have outlined out of the entire OECD due diligence uh, process. So moving over to the next slide. Um, so I'm going to speak on what is the latest uh, uh, requirements that we are uh, seeing in conflict minerals. OK, uh, before we just move on to the latest, uh, here is the latest version of the reporting template that has come. So by 26 May 2023, uh, version uh, 6.31 came in, uh, which had uh, minor corrections uh, and uh, some of the issue fixes uh, related to uh, uh, the declaration 
and uh, what sm the smelter list and uh, how they were uh, searching up for smelters. So, and, and then uh, not only is EMRT, uh, but there is also called uh, EMRT, which is called the extended, uh, uh, this is an extension of uh, CMRT where you are supposed to report on uh, cobalt and mica. And uh, this is not mandatory now, but there are uh, some customers who uh, require organizations to report on these two minerals. So in that case, you would uh, use the EMRT uh, version. So it has got some changes, which is related to uh, bugs and also uh, updates to uh, standards, uh, smelter reference list and, um, and standard smelter list. So the reference list and uh, smelter list has also been updated. And we are also anticipating uh, EMRT uh, uh, in the spring of 2024. So I'm moving over to the next uh, uh, slide. So here we are going to see three main uh, customer requirements that we have uh, seen uh, on the increase um, over the last uh, couple of years, like oh, especially over the last uh, two years. Uh, so we have been in the business of uh, helping organizations um, up, uh, comply to conflict related regulations through our services. Of course, we did come up with our own uh, software Autogen CM, which we will be looking into it later. Uh, but even then, we have uh, seen that there is a difference in, in the way of approach over the last two years. We want to share that with you. So the first thing is like uh, we have seen an increase uh, in requests for product level CMRTs. Um, earlier, there uh, used to be a lot of organizations which um, uh, you know, which requested for company level uh, CMRTs, which was much easier for the suppliers. Um, when company put out a request, organizations put out a request, it was easier for the suppliers to give them back the company level de declaration because uh, they could be making huge number of products, but it didn't matter. So the, uh, at the scoping level, it was very easy. Uh, but right now we are seeing um, uh, certain customers make uh, specific uh, requests to the organization for uh, uh, a product level CMRT. Uh, they want to uh, know uh, uh, whether we are complying to the regulations uh, based on the products that is being purchased. So this is very specific. And what uh, this basically does is it uh, removes the unwanted smelters. Either ways in the company level declaration, when you are declaring for the organization as a whole, it's going to be, uh, you will have uh, um, so many smelters which you, uh, which you needn't report on actually. So uh, this will reduce the product level CMRT is reducing the uh, smelters, unwanted smelters here, and it is going to reduce the overall risk. Uh, and and, and uh, uh, though this has got advantages, we also see this has increased uh, the burden on the suppliers um, because like uh, getting the company level declaration uh, itself uh, a tedious task and when it comes to product level there are a lot of intricacies involved uh, uh, for the suppliers as well so uh, because it is going to be each product level uh, uh, in case if you have 100 products or you have 30 products you know you have to uh, the suppliers now have to give you 30 CMRTs for each and every product so uh, this is going to be a huge burden for them and uh, Suppliers cannot do this manually. It's very painful. They also need some tools. Uh, and so this is, uh, though uh, we have seen this trend rise, we also see, uh, uh, you know, the suppliers uh, struggling to give uh, product level CMRT over the last couple of years. Um, and uh, I'm moving over to the next slide. Uh, and this is how we are uh, uh, going to see the product level CMRT, how it is done as a process. The first one is like, uh, you are using your product BOMs. So, um, as an organization, if you uh, if you are uh, manufacturing uh, 30 parts and then 30 products, or uh, it would be not only products, whatever be it, like you have to segregate the product uh, uh, bill of materials. Uh, then you have to identify each and every supplier that is associated with your uh, uh, product form, and you have to make sure that your uh, suppliers are duplicated. Take the unique list. And uh, once you've taken the unique list, you have to uh, go, uh, go to the suppliers, uh, request uh, them to provide you with the CMRT, and then you have to consolidate and uh, provide the information. That is one way. The other way is using 
MDS. And uh, this is mostly uh, related to the automotive sector uh, because all, most of the uh, automotive companies could uh, use IMDS. And uh, in this section, we can see that you have to, if your company is manufacturing pro products, parts, you have to identify the product uh, number in IMDS. Um, and then you also specifically have to use, you can't do this manually in case you have a, a huge number of components lying there and you have to use a software to, uh, you know, you have to use a software or a program to identify uh, the suppliers for your uh, respective products. And um, then finally comes the consolidation. Uh, so the consolidation part is common in these two methods. And uh, we are also happy to say that uh, we have a software which will get you, which will help get you the supplier's name uh, based on the uh, product MDS. So I'm moving over to the next slide. And the second uh, requirement that we have uh, seen is like, uh, it's mostly based on uh, smelters. Uh, and uh, right now the CMRT uh, uh, gives you two basic types of uh, uh, smelters. One is uh, those in the covered regions and then the um, high risk uh, areas. So uh, the CMRT template uh, gives you uh, these two type of smelters, but we have seen uh, customers are requesting for uh, the following ones. That is what we have shared with you on screen. Uh, so they want to know who are the non-compliance smelters outright. So this is this is much simpler. Then the other one is like they want to know the smelters uh, from countries that have used sanctions. You know, there's been imposing a lot of sanctions of lately. And uh, then you also have uh, uh, Kara countries. And uh, and you also have uh, uh, UFLPA uh, area type smelter. So this is basically all the smelters which is in the China Ugyu region because there's a lot of forced labor going on. So there is a sanction and the people uh, who are uh, uh, you know, going to import something from that region, they have to comply with uh, conflict regulation. Then you also have Russian smelters. Uh, then you also have uh, OAFC sanctions. And uh, we know that uh, uh, Russia has taken, uh, uh, you know, a lot of sanctions, especially after the Russia-Ukraine conflict. And then we also have the uh, higher uh, risk countries, uh, L2 from RMAP which is available only for the RMA paid uh, members. So uh, uh, though conflict mineral reporting template offers only uh, two sets of uh, smelter criteria, we see there is an increase uh, uh, in the um, uh, smelter information that customers uh, want to have. So I am moving over to the next slide. The third one is like they want a thorough audit of uh, CMRT um, and better uh, scoring system. and. <clears throat> And it is, uh, you know, when it comes to conflict mineral reporting, uh, so it doesn't mean that we're just going to gather all the information from uh, the suppliers and then, you know, have a uh, consolidation data without verification. So this needs a uh, full uh, verification. So we are, not, uh, you know, we are required to check for not only 3TG. Uh, as we saw, we also have extended minerals. We have cobalt and mica. Um, against uh, IMDS data. So IMDS data is going to be really helpful um, in case you are an automated company. If, if not, then you will also have a full, uh, you have full material disclosure. So we have to validate uh, all the data that is coming in basically with the information we have prior. Uh, this is basically covered in the CMRT report in questions. And uh, you can see that um, they're also checking for conflict affected high risk areas and sanctioned countries. Uh, so they are also a part of uh, the questions covered in the CMRT template, and uh, they also want to know, like, uh, you mean, like, do you have a hundred percent of recycled resources of 3PG, which is also one of the questions in the template, and uh, how much uh, percentage of responses um, are you receiving, and uh, you know how much uh, is being actually reported uh, to you. So you have that sort of. Uh, uh, detailed auditing, which will be covered also in the reporting template. And uh, most importantly, uh, do, the, do the suppliers who supply to you, they, do they have a conflict minerals policy? Uh, have they published it yet? And uh, is your supplier really doing a due diligence on a smart, or is he, uh, or is, are they giving you random sort of information because uh, uh, they assume that uh, nothing is going to be verified. So, a uh, lot of uh, detailed auditing is uh, really required uh, by the customers. We have seen this, uh, you know, increase over the last uh, uh, couple of years. 
two years to be precise. And then also they want uh, DTS scoring metrics. And sometimes uh, customers also prefer, uh, you know, virtual audits in uh, some cases. So uh, these are the three uh, latest uh, requirements that we have seen an increase over the last uh, uh, two years. And I'm going to move over to the next slide. Uh, so before uh, uh, having to learn about uh, Autogen CM, which is a software for uh, helping you comply with conflict minerals, uh, I also want to just take uh, a minute or so and uh, tell you why we actually need a software. Uh, because uh, first things first, like our supplier collaboration and our uh, supplier engagement, uh, for um, uh, bigger organizations can become very tedious and difficult. A lot of uh, manual uh, work may be involved. And not only that, it takes up on a lot of time. And so we always uh, have, uh, uh, you know, we have to uh, make sure that we have the proper resources to do that. And, um, and there is also this, uh, you know, the suppliers also must go through the due diligence, which means it needs to be uh, verified by uh, third parties. All these things uh, will make your, uh, um, you know, compliance uh, process really uh, burdensome. And um, the other, the last factor is that, like, uh, and if you do not want to engage with certain uh, um, suppliers who are uh, bringing in minerals from certain smelters, you have to find alternatives for uh, the minerals that you're using, which is very difficult because uh, 3TG is mostly used in consumer electronics. So you finding an alternative source is also becoming difficult and finding alternative smelters also is all the more tedious. And all this is a, is a manual laborious process. And that is why um, uh, at APA we, uh, came up with uh, Autogen CM, which will help you do your tasks and comply to con uh, conflict minerals regulations more effectively. So I'm going to hand over the presentation to uh, the uh, to Rajiv, who's our expert in conflict minerals regulation. Uh, Rajiv. Yeah, many thanks, Ranjini. Yeah, so, thanks. Uh, we are currently at yeah, we are currently at. Autogen CM, our responsible mineral solution on the webinar agenda. Next slide. Yeah. This is Autogen CM login page. Next slide. Oh, first, let's see the process flow for Autogen CM. The major modules are supplier communication, CM due diligence, and report consolidation. Once the supplier list is received, it is passed through 150 plus validation checks. The supply CMRD may be accepted or need follow-ups based on the validation report. This report may be an intermediate report or a final report, which depends on the needs of the customer. We require only the supplier related information like supply names, uh, email IDs from the uh, uh, customer ends. Next slide. Here's a screenshot of our validation criteria from code one to next slide. Code 150. So next slide. The key characteristics of APA software include it's a SAS model, division wise reporting, instant due diligence with respect to 150 plus customizable validation criteria user-friendly interface and effortless uploading for the suppliers. The process flow is first we need, first we, we are required to upload the supply details along with the contact information. Second, a notification will be sent to the suppliers to submit CMRT information via Autogen portal. Third, the CMRT submitted by the supplier through the supplier link will be queued for further processing. We at APA can also upload the CMRT from the supplier if they directly send the CMRT template over an email. For the tool will process the template data automatically and validate with respect to 150 plus customizable validation criteria and throws an exception report. Lastly, the report can be consolidated in a single click irrespective of the smelter. Next slide. It's time for a quick poll.
thanks for answering next slide now let's start with the demo Uh, uh, Ranjini, can I share my screen? Yes, I'm going to make you the presenter. So now we're just going to go over the recap session and uh, to sum it all up, we are saying the CMR, this uh, computational reporting has become mandatory in Europe. And, and even if you are not a US SEC filer, you may have to answer some CMRT questions. Then product level CMRT is the way forward. And then you have to work with your suppliers um, on a plan B for high risk melters. And uh, we request you not to take uh, this lightly and we'd have to perform uh, stricter uh, due diligence on uh, the supplier C CMRTs that is uh, received, uh, uh, that is received from the suppliers to our organization. And uh, please don't just consolidate and send it uh, to your customers without a proper due diligence. And um, the reporting earlier, which was just confirmed to 3TG, is now extended to MICA and COBOL. And uh, we are also seeing um, a lot of uh, uh, requests that are, that are coming on the way uh, for the extended uh, minerals. And then we also um, request you to uh, use the software to identify uh, the risks and, and also to mitigate them. Moving over to the next slide. And at APA, we have uh, a wide uh, range of not only uh, services, but also softwares. So we have uh, a software for conflict minerals, which is Autogen CM, which you just saw. And then we also have uh, uh, IMDS uh, Express, uh, MDS Express, and then we also have IMDS AI, uh, both related to um, IMDS uh, related systems. And we also have um, the option to automate your uh, uh, skip uh, skip submissions. Uh, then we have a green check, which will uh, be able to uh, help you comply with uh, most of the regulations like REACH, RO, HS, DISCA, Prop 65, um, and, uh, as, uh, you know, German supply chain due diligence. And even if you have uh, uh, custom related uh, uh, requirements and compliance, we will be able to take care of that via uh, green check also. Then we also have the SOC analyst. Uh, and for sustainability related uh, to, we have ESG HQ. Um, and then finally, we also have a software called SIPS. Uh, this will tell you the products or um, parts that should be sold. Uh, whether your products or components or parts whatsoever be it whether it can be sold on certain uh, uh, local regions uh, based on the regional compliances in your uh, country um, moving over to the next slide so once this is done a survey will be initiated uh, please fill it up to help us improve and if there are uh, any questions, we are always happy to answer. Otherwise, you can reach us out at uh, compliance of the APA engineering .com. Are there any questions? Okay, I don't see any questions. So we are ending the session. Thank you for patiently hearing out the session. Thank you for waiting for us. Have a nice day. Bye.